Hi everyone. Today we're hanging out with Brandy Joy Smith. She is a motherhood coach. Um, I think she classifies herself as a maternal coach and creator. And so um, she used to be a stylist in New York and then moved to Los Angeles. She has two kids under two, I think, a puppy and her husband and they, um, they flip houses as well as now she is a coach. And I think it's actually been a couple of years that this transition has happened, um, but it's so natural for her and she does one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions as well as group sessions. And so I am gonna just treat this as my one-on-one -on -one <laughs> group or your one-on-one -on -one session with Brandy. So I'm gonna ask her all of my motherhood questions and um, feel free to add yours when you're hanging out and watching. Um, but yeah, let's get a look into what these sessions are like with her, um, how she got into this field, and um, yeah, all of the good stuff. So I'm going to have her join in. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried doing live. Feeling about them? Are you getting comfortable with it? Send me some feedback. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm good feeling good today. oh I wonder I need to I may need to adjust my um my internet so just tell me Ooh, okay there we go all right can you turn off your wi-fi so it's just lte I, I've noticed that helps lives it's some it's sure. a, a little trick that works here and there hi everyone as you're joining in we're just hanging out with brandy we're working on our tech issues no, but okay. Feel free happens. to think about your questions. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I cool. see you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, gosh, I've been prepping for this for so long. I've been trying to get you on my live. I've been so excited to talk to you about everything that you do in your coaching program. Awesome. And uh, so can you tell us a little bit of your background and maybe a little bit of your when I grow up dream? So like when you were little, what had you always thought about doing or being or did you have a dream like that? I absolutely had a dream like that. And um, it's so funny that you asked this question because it made me laugh when I saw it. It when I <laughs> wanted when I was young, I was certified shopaholic and I grew up from a very Ooh. modest um, upbringing so we I, I was I had everything that I needed but um, you know money was it was tight when we were younger and yeah. so I remember telling my parents that I wanted to be a professional shopper that's what I wanted to do oh I, my god I, I love it that. so much and I remember them saying, that's not a real job, and you're going to have to d do something else. So, um, you know, fast forward, and I wind up being a fashion stylist, which is, you know, not exactly a personal shopper, but pretty close. And it definitely fulfilled yeah. that passion for clothes and shopping um, and creativity, which is what I realized what I really wanted was just being able to be um, creative with my hands and and clothing mm. was just the avenue that kind of did that. So that's what I wanted that to so be. Cool. And that's what I did for like 11 years of my life. Wow. So when, so like that transition of uh, one, I agree, I had everything I needed, but I was in a modest, like, yes, yeah, same as you. And so um, thrifty, super thrifty, I could find the best stuff for the best prices in the random spots all over our city. And it was so much fun, like hunting for cool things like that. But so when you transitioned and you went to New York and all of this, what was that like turning point that made you decide to just move to Los Angeles, change your career all together? I mean, that's a huge move. So I think we are interested in understanding what that, what that was and how that happened. Yeah. So really what happened is um, I met my husband when I was in New York and I met him like right as my business was kind of really booming. And it was just, it was so crazy. Um, my husband was also like working on his first um, like house flip that we kind of did together. So it was yeah. just like, we had, he had moved into my place so that we could save money to get this first property. And so we were literally living 
um, in the basement and we had two roommates up top and the oh basement was like, it was bigger, but I mean, it had no windows and half of it was like our little living space and the other half was my office. And That's basically amazing. from like 8 a.m. on interns would be in and out of my place, like messengers bringing clothes. It was just total chaos, um, but I loved it and I lived it. But when we decided that we, you know, wanted to think about having a family, I knew that this career really wasn't going to work for having a family. And I was also kind of at the point in my career was I was really feeling burnt out. I just, yeah. it was really exciting and it was the most amazing career for my 20s. And I got to travel and meet so many cool people. But I started to have this like nagging feeling that it just, it wasn't like lifting me up and giving me the same mm -hmm. energy exchange that it used to. And right. I really pushed that feeling aside for a while because I had felt so lucky just to be able to ha have had a successful career in fashion. And I know that's mm -hmm. what so many people want. So I had a lot of like guilt and shame around saying like, hey, I'm ready to move on to the next um, chapter. So I had a lot of untangling to do. And my husband had actually suggested, hey, my friend Paul, he is a life coach. And why don't you talk to him and just see what, you know, what might be on the you know horizon for you. And so right. I started having these sessions with Paul. And what I really loved that he did, instead of like trying to put the pressure on me, like what is going to be your next career? He said, you know, let's talk about what you want your lifestyle to look like. Ooh. And that was yeah. really, you know, changed a lot for me when I could step back and not just have to scramble and think, oh my God, what is the, what am I going to do? I've done 11 years in fashion. Like what, what are my skills? You know, he said like, tell me about your day. What time do you wake up? How much money do you make? Do you, are you in an office? Are you here, there, et cetera? So through this process of working with Paul, I actually came to, you know, coaching. And so I was coaching part-time and styling, and I was working mostly with just female creatives because that's kind of like what landed in my lap. Um, and then fast forward, me and my, my husband got an opportunity to manage um, – the office in Los Angeles in his company. So I knew it was my chance. I'd always been trying to get him back to California because that's where I'm from. And so we just took it um, and we had just done IVF. And so I was pregnant and we're like, okay, this is going to be a great you know, place to raise kids, slow down a little bit and um, let me kind of like explore the coaching thing, but maybe to still do styling on the side. I hadn't like fully, fully committed to coaching yet. Um, right. And then I had kind of like, I guess you could say somewhat of a traumatic um, birth story with my son. Mm -hmm. And through mm -hmm. that traumatic birth story, I realized that there was so little support for mothers in the transition into motherhood. Um, there was, you know, there's a million baby groups out there to like discuss everything from breastfeeding to potty training and, yes. you know, the pediatricians and everybody's really there and to give you all the information about the child. But this transition I was going through as a mother, as a new mother, I felt really unprepared for. And then when mm -hmm. I looked around, it seemed like there wasn't, I don't know, I felt really alone because it like, wasn't going as smooth as like, you know, everybody says, oh, motherhood is so natural, you'll just fall into it, you know? And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> it's not so yeah. what's wrong I'm with not me? falling. I'm not falling into it, I'm falling, I'm just falling. That's yeah, how I'm just falling it's like, down. I'm not falling. It's yeah, no, I'm not, just falling. <laughs> I just not, it's not good, it's not great. And, um, you know, through some conversations, even with girlfriends, I remember feeling so relieved. Um, yeah. Like, you know, being like, I, I'm, I'm really having a hard time with this infant stage. Like, does anyone mm -hmm. else feel that? And I remember a yeah. girlfriend saying to me, like, I absolutely feel that. She's like, you just have to like power through the first year. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. And I was like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Someone out there can like say that and like, you know, yeah. I, I felt heard for the first time. 
So kind of through that process, I realized that I wanted to niche down and really work with mothers. I also, like mothers are so incredible. They're multitasking yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. And so with my like business background and being an entrepreneur and building this big career, I also had a lot to talk about, you know, in terms of working mothers and helping them yeah. like get get back to whatever space they need to be in, whether that's creating a new career that works better for their lifestyle or creating boundaries as they re-enter the workforce postpartum. But it's not just for like new moms, it's just like something I wanna like get across because there's yes. so many transitions in motherhood, right? Like you may stay home the first few years and then all of a sudden your kids are in school and now you have all this time on your hands. So there's a transition there and so, you know, maybe your kids are going off to college and there's a transition there. Or maybe your kids are just becoming a teenagers and they're independent and you're feeling like, wow, like I'm not needed need as me. much. Where is this? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so crazy that one of these big, the biggest transitions of your life, there's really not a lot Nothing. of conversation around because mm -hmm. it's, it affects your relationship to yourself. It affects your relationship to your partner, your career. And then these people that you've brought into your life, your kids. Yeah. So that was kind of the goal and the story and how I got there. Um, mm. But yeah, it's been so rewarding to work with mothers because I'm just constantly impressed by their strength and their yeah. resilience and their flexibility to just like make things work. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. It's like everything you're saying, I, it, I, one, I'm tearing up. I'm like, okay, don't cry. Like, just calm down, lady. Don't cry <laughs> in an Instagram live. And then two, I'm just like feeling so much. Um, I think we all feel these things, whether our kids are old and out of the house, or we have littles or we're pregnant. And it's such a real thing that, like you said, everyone is, I see all those memes, everyone's opening the doors for the moms when they're pregnant. And they're like, Oh, lift your feet, let me do this. And then the baby comes and it's like, oh, yeah, you're letting your kid do that? Or they're, oh, um, your kid's screaming on the floor. The, the, the whole thing changes. It's like they take care of you while you're housing the child. And then when the child's out, it's like, no, 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 no more help. No more help. It's just like you have a kid and you're in public and it's, it's crying. It is crying. Like, do, figure it out. And so I yeah. like how you're helping coach women through that. Just like the public eye looking in on your family how to work, how to be a mom, how to still be an individual outside of being a mom and a wife and a fam like having a family, all of that. It's just like, this stuff is so important. And I love, love, love that you niche down. Did you have a hard time? Because um, I'm in a state right now where I might be, I want to niche even further, but I don't know if it's necessary. So when you were working with John, your life coach on that, or maybe it was just something that sparked in you, but when you went from working with female founders to then going into motherhood, was that a scary jump to be like, okay, this is my niche. This is my actual focus. Cause I'm sure you could coach many women and many people and do such an incredible job, but picking that specific category, was that a hard step or did it just seem obvious? Well, I mean, in all honesty, I still have a few women that I coach that are not yeah. mothers. Um, but it wasn't because I truly feel like you are your own best client, right? If you're really passionate about the work that you're doing and like, mm -hmm. it's going to, you're going to be your best client. Right. And yeah. so I'm a mother. I feel so relatable in the experience. <laughs> I have so much story to ch share. Um, so for me, it felt really like a natural fit. And when I looked mm -hmm. around, I, felt like there was a need. I mean, there's, I, I think what's great is people are recognizing that this transition is really big and we need to pay more attention to it. I'm yeah. like, I tell people like, I'm not just coaching, like I'm on a mission to change the narrative around motherhood yeah. because I, mm -hmm. I feel like the narrative is this is going to be tough. It's going to be painful, but you can do it. You got it. And just like, go, it's, you're going to be natural at it. And just, and I really want to change that because like the reality is, yes, you can, everyone can get the skills to mother, right? Yes. Of course you can. Some of us are going to be naturals and some mm -hmm. of us are going to have to work a little bit harder to make the transition work. Just mm -hmm. like some of us are great at math and some of us aren't. And <laughs> yes. also 
there's a whole gray area. There's some of us who are like, you know, I'm not that great at math, but I can kill it at division and, mm -hmm. you know, multiplication, but anything outside of that is over my head. And I yeah. tell that to moms who are like, you know, I'm really struggling with the infant phase. You know what? That might be a really hard phase for you. Right. You might thrive at the toddler phase, whereas yeah. another mom, you know, will have the reverse experience mm -hmm. or whatever. I just think it's a really um, unhealthy narrative to say that this is just going to be so natural because it leaves you in a space of when it's not <laughs> to be yes. like, wow, there's something What's wrong, wrong with, with me. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. so I, I really would like to change that. The other part of the narrative around motherhood that I really want to change is like this whole prepping for the child and not prepping for yourself. Like, let's be yeah. real. You don't touch that nursery <laughs> for like, no. the first, I don't know. For me, six months. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, they're in your room for six months plus. Yeah. And there are so many things I think women, and look, I'm not saying don't make a beautiful nursery if that brings yeah. you joy totally do that but <laughs> what i would say is you know hey don't be afraid to add that pelvic floor specialist to your registry or yeah. you know a coach or a therapist or a postpartum doula and i know that i'm speaking all of these terms that you know i'm sure there are going to be people out there like oh the, wouldn't those all be a luxury etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know, I would challenge you to think, you know, like, do you need a snoo or, or do you need mental support? Yeah, like, and, and I'm all for the snoo if you need the snoo, you know? I, I do mean? love it. I do love yeah. it, but I agree with you. I think pelvic floor exercise, that <laughs> physical therapy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's way more important. Our bodies versus a bassinet, 100%. Listen, all I'm saying is there's no, like, one size fits all no. for mothers. Yeah. Right. So if you need a little support in a different area, I want to make that conversation really fluid and acceptable. I, yeah. somebody that I follow on Instagram, who I really look up to, she had posted that she got a, um, a night nurse and she got like yeah. all sorts of slack, like hate slack. Like, oh, if, you know, like, I can't believe it. Like, this is a part of it. You have, she's, she was also a CEO launching a business yeah. and her baby came early. I mean, just mm -hmm. all these things. And I was like, wow, like what, what kind of message is that sending? Like we all have yes. different needs and we all need different types of support. So mm -hmm. like, let's not shame this mother for that. Let's actually yeah. lift her up for being courageous enough to say, I, I have a need here that needs to yes. be met in order. So I can mom. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we talk about this? This is something that's been on my husband and I's brain a lot and probably for you too. It's 18. So let's give this like five or so minutes, five, 10, and we'll close out. But um, the village, it takes a village. Yes, corny. Yes, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. It does though. And so I have this in intense mom guilt that I'm working through this year um, on just, I want to be there to raise my Harvey, right? And my other kids that I hope to have. But I also have major passions for my career and for so many things in our life joint as a family that I'm working towards. And so when I have help during the week, whether it's one day or two days, or if moms have full time nannies, for some reason, there's something in my brain that's like, no, 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 that's not okay. Your kids need you 100% of the time. And, um, you know, all of these things. So there's that issue that I think a lot of us women, whether we, we go into it thinking, oh, it's totally fine, full-time nanny, no problem. Or we have the other side of it, no matter who you are and what you grew up with, there's mom guilt with that. Something about it is mo mother guilt. So maybe you can like kind of dispel that. But then also when I'm watching, you know, 18th century stuff and they have a full-time nanny and the mom's like, oh, I haven't seen my kid in a couple of days. There was that whole generation where it was like they all had a, a full day nurse and each kid had their own nanny. So there's that. And then you go even further back and it's like the grandparents are helping the, the aunts and uncles. Like the whole family lives in, in like a half mile radius, right? So it really did take a village. So long-winded why is it now that us mother, mother, you're listening, this is a rant and I need you. I'm going to hire you as my coach, but um, this is a long-winded rant of 
why do us modern mothers think that asking for help, receiving help, having help during the week so that we can still be an individual and work on our careers, why is there guilt surrounding that? So give me what you got out of that messy, messy rant. Like, oh my gosh. I totally get it. I think the guilt, I, we could go on for hours. Yeah, about that's guilt. why I'm going to hire you. Different, so just, yeah. There's different <laughs> mom guilt, especially like with the pandemic, there's been all sorts of guilt. And trust mm -hmm. me, I cried the day that we hired our nanny, even yes. though I felt like I was physically suffering and I needed yes. to time for myself to mm -hmm. work. Yeah. Um, I think what's, what's important for ourselves and for our children is that our, our children get a well-balanced mommy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, that can mean different things for different people, but if right. work lights you up, if work is your passion, if you have mm -hmm. goals and ambitions towards your job, right? That's mm -hmm. your passion. You want to share that with your children. And right. for me personally, that's, definitely aligned with my my career is my passion which is it, it's aligned with my lifestyle and I, and I want my kids to know that the time that I'm spending away from them I'm doing something that I love right yeah and I'm also showing them I'm mirroring the behavior to them that says it's okay for me to take time for myself like wow. how do we teach yeah. our children self-love if we don't mm. practice it ourselves, right yes. and if you love what you do for a career, like you should be able to fully do that career, however many mm -hmm. hours that means in the day, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when you do have your time for your kids, just be really present during that time and give them that time. Mm -hmm. It's better to be fully present for three hours in the evening with your kids than trying to be there while you're on the phone the whole time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's like sending mixed messaging. And I also think like, when I think about my daughter, I do not want her to feel like she has to pick one or the other. And I certainly don't want her yeah. to feel guilt when she goes mm -hmm. to work. So yes. I'm not going to give myself that mom guilt because I want to yeah. show my daughter that I was able to put my dreams were just important as her father's mm -hmm. or anyone else and that they deserve to be um, respected and valued. So yeah. what I think about mom guilt is it's, it's a waste of time, right? It's <laughs> yes. very real. It's very real, but it's also a waste of time. And at the end yes. of the day, you have to look at the messaging that you really want to send your children and mm -hmm. feeling guilty isn't going to help them in any way. So feel yes. empowered with taking the time for yourself and then make the time to be present with them. And that's all I love that's the that. best you can do. Oh, that was so good. So what are some ways then you personally are showing up, um, you know, undistracted. I, I think I was in a Hey Mama. If you guys watching aren't joined, Hey Mama does, it's an incredible organization of working mamas. They do yeah. weekly meetups and all this stuff. So check them out. But um, one of the talks, a woman said that if she is like full mom mode, she leaves her phone at home. She has a watch that has data on it. So she'll go on a walk to the park or go play for 40 minutes. She can be like, if there is a fire drill at work, she is available, but it's only on her watch and she could just make a quick phone call. But um, she's not scrolling. She's not checking emails. She's not getting bombarded by her team. And I love that. So do you have any practical tips for us working moms when we are being mama, full mama, how to unplug and like be fully present? Absolutely. Um, same thing. I made the excuse of wanting the Apple watch um, so that I could... One, I'm just trying, we're trying to not be on our phone around um, my son because he's very into screens, like okay. screen crazy. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, we have the watch. Like it allows mm -hmm. you to be checked in, but you're not like on the phone. Um, for yeah. us, we just like really make it family time. My husband um, cooks and we like gather in the kitchen together. We usually put music on, we kind of have like a little dance party. It's kind of like our little routine. And then pr it's pretty much from when our nanny leaves till tucking kids in the bed is just family time. And really yeah. it's after work hours most of the time. So yeah. you feel pretty good about putting the phones away. Occasionally we'll like do a FaceTime with grandparents, especially because we're not seeing them cool. as much as 
we wish we were. But right. yeah, we just make that kind of time family time. So it's everything from having dinner together, but also hanging out while if you're a mom and you're cooking dinner, invite your family into the kitchen, at least yes. so you could spend that time. And if you have toddlers, it's a great time to invite them into the cooking process. I love um, that. Yeah, and then me and my husband, we kind of like divide and conquer on the bath time, story time, bedtime. So he does bath time, I clean up dinner, then we have family mm -hmm. story, maybe we'll yeah. watch a little Pixar if we want to before bed. Into it. <laughs> and, then like and then each one of us takes a kid to put him to bed. So yeah, I feel like it's just carving out that routine and saying, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, mm -hmm. children love routines and they get excited. They they, you know, we pull the book off the shelf and <gasps> they like, know. Oh, it's story time, you know? <laughs> It's just about whatever that ritual is that you mm -hmm. can create in the evening for your family. And then we try to kind of mirror it. It's much shorter in the morning, yeah. but you know, like making breakfast together and getting the kids mm -hmm. fed together. I would say like it's a little more work stuff happening Messy, during yes. that time. It's I not agree. as like, clean, but you know. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, you. I also think like weekends – I get it. Maybe you don't have work, but it's still important to try to find a time to do something for yourself. Yeah. Because something that's really been resonating with me that my husband said was since we've had these two under two was like, wow, the weekends used to be for recharging and yeah. now we don't really get that recharge. No. Which, mm -mm. I mean, it's hard to continue to work and live and be a present mom or dad if you're not recharging. So, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's, trying to get the kids down for a dual nap and getting that 45 Ooh. minutes to do whatever you want or, you know, <laughs> one parent having to hold it down for 45 minutes so the other parent that gets to do something. Like, I yeah. highly suggest finding a flow like that too so at least you're getting a little bit of recharge on the weekends. I know it's- I love that. And, and so one thing too is like, okay, so my husband's a big golfer this year. He used to be a big surfer and then- um, 2020 just golfing all the time so if he's spending four hours at, on a round with his buddies you know safe distance all that blah 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 um, then I'm like okay I get four hours either on Sunday or next weekend to just go sit in a park and read a book by myself or take a two-hour nap and a long shower and like paint my nails or just something where it's like I'm not a mom right now I am just a me filling up my mental health tank and just like, like getting back to a little bit of that alone time. I've never wanted more alone time in my life than becoming a mom. And, and it's so weird to say like, I want to be alone, but I do. And even if it's like you said, that 45 minutes or 10 minutes of just sitting alone with my thoughts, I feel like I'm a much better human, a much better mom, wife, friend, whatever. So I like that you highlighted that. And then also the big thing about the routine. I think that's so huge. Um, I have a meeting in two, but yes. I want everyone to follow you. So it's Brandy Joy Smith. Um, yes. You're still offering group sessions as well as your one-on-one. Yeah, right? we have our next group session starting on signups will start on Mother's Day. So that'll okay. be for the next cohort. And cool. I'm also going to be doing a weekly clubhouse where we're going to kind of <gasps> tackle some of those issues, yes. issues that come up for okay. moms through these transitions. So yeah. Um, I, I will be there. Have, I'll be announcing the first one at the end of the week. So okay. look out for that. And um, I, I hope I'll see you on there too. Yes, please. I will join you. What is your clubhouse name? Is it just Brandy Joy Smith as well? Brandy Joy okay. Smith across everything. <laughs> yes. Okay, awesome. We're going to stalk you. Thank you so much. I honestly, yes, I'm excited. I need to join the, the Mother's Day cohort. I'm in. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Brandy. Thanks Bye. for hanging. Bye.